I want to talk a little bit about the handle or hilt of the fighting knife. Now I talked about the texture previously. Now I want to talk about the geometry, the shape of it. Now this is super personal. I mean, it's dependent on the size of your hand, the conformation of your hand, um, the technique you're going to use, the size of your blade. I mean, there's a whole bunch of variables that go into it. So what I want to talk about is just some basic, um, basic principles, some basic guiding ideas behind the hilt uh, on a fighting knife. Now, the handle allows us to apply the force from our hand through the blade. So we have to be able to apply force, and we have to be able to apply it in a number of different directions. Um, again, you've got four basic holds. You've got your hammer grip. You've got your saber grip. And then the reverse of those two, you've got your reverse grip or your ice pick grip. And so each of those is going to have sort of an ideal handle shape that goes into it. Um, and if you're only going to use, ever going to use one, then you can idealize, you can maximize your handle for that particular uh, hold. Um, if you're going to need to be a little more flexible, then you're going to need something that's sort of a compromise between the various uh, holds. And I, I think you'll find some, some, uh, some of these shapes are really good for anything. Now, first thing we're talking about is size, obviously length. You want it to be at least as long as your hand is wide. I mean, there's no point in having, you know, a couple of fingers hanging off the end, not providing any help, not, not providing any torque, not providing any uh, grip. <laughs> so you want it to be at least that long. And a little bit hanging out at the end is fine because you can use it on pressure points. You can, you can use it to strike with. Uh, and also, if you get back a little bit, it can give you a little more leverage on it. But so length is, is, is pretty standard on that. Uh, and again, too long... Um, it can help your opponent. If he goes into a snake disarm, you can take it out of your hand. Uh, it can get caught on things. It becomes unwieldy. And uh, again, we maybe want to move to a sword at that point. But a little bit sticking out the back is fine. But you want at least as much as you've got hand uh, on the blade. And that includes going into a saber grip. You can see it comes down a bit further. But the pad of my hand, all my fingers can still engage it. So that one's, uh, that one's essentially long enough. So uh, length, pretty straightforward. Uh, next, we want to talk about... Um, diameter uh, and shape. Now if you make a hole in your hand you'll notice that is not perfectly round nor is it flat. It's sort of an oblong shape and it's of a specific size. If you get something too big, well if you get like trying to palm a basketball, eventually you get to the point where your thumb and your fingers can't oppose each other, let alone the pads of the hand. So we want something that gives us a good, uh, you know, allows us to get a good grip around it uh, and maximize the strength in our hand, uh, also give us surface area in contact with the hand. Now if it's too small, you get down to where, you know, a lot of your hand isn't even touching it at that point. So as an example, we have this little fella. Now the, the primary purpose of this is concealment. This is a sleeve knife. Uh, it, it has very little to do with, uh, uh, you know, actual fighting. Uh, I mean, this would not be a primary knife. But you can see it's a little flat, very straight handle. And it's small. I mean, my hand, when I grip it tight, it actually doesn't really grip. I need to I need to really curl around it and get onto it before I can get a grip on it. So this would not be a good size or shape because we are having to apply forces and we're trying to apply forces in a number of directions. Again, the big one, stabbing, you know, no matter how you're going to stab with it, uh, chopping or slashing, slicing. Now, we don't want our hand to slide up onto the blade for obvious reasons, and that's where a lot of the force is going to go. But we also don't want it to slip out. So we have to be able to, and if, if it gets stuck in something, we need to be able to pull it out as well. So we need to be able to apply force forward and backward, and then side to side, front to back, whatever. Now the other idea is shape. So we don't want a round. See, this one's perfectly round. And the disadvantage to that, besides our hand not being perfectly round, is that you can't identify what position the blade's in. Now, it's less important on a double-edged blade, but on a single-edged blade, I want to know where the blade is when I pick, pick the knife up. And I can't tell on this one until I either look at it or I get right up on the guard. And then it's, well, okay, now we got to adjust. Whereas something that's got more of an oblong shape, and especially, uh, again, on a single-edged blade, it's front to back are different. As soon as I pick that up, I can tell exactly where the blade is oriented, and I can also tell exactly where I am on the handle. So that, that's about ideal. Now, there's a number of ways uh, that we can uh, 
give us a surface area, which is what we're looking for, or, or um, an angle that allows us to apply you know, pressure toward the front of the blade. Uh, one of them is a cross guard. Now this has to be well designed so it provides some support for either your finger and thumb or your thumb or your hand or whatever, which means it has to be essentially pretty smooth and maybe got some width to it. This little fella's got a cross guard on it that's essentially completely worthless. It's the width of the blade is all it is. And if I were to provide, put any force on that, it's going to cut right into my hand, right into my thumb, right into my hand. I, it, it's next to worthless for fighting force as far as a stab goes. Limits my technique a little bit. Now I'm stuck with slicing or slashing because if I try and stab with any force, it's going to ride up on there. So I need something with a little more substance there. Or in this case, you can see the shape of the handle. Uh, and it's tapered back this way. So my whole hand is able to provide you know, it's it's able to apply the force toward the front, and then I've also got something to work against here. I got something for my thumb right here. Got some texturing there, a little file work there. I've got a little bit of a lump there. Now it's not a full guard like that, but it's more than sufficient to allow me to apply as much force as I need to in that direction. This one, even more so. It's very wide. Now this one's designed for essentially a hammer grip that goes against the base of the hand gives me all the contact I need to provide as much force as I need. Now this one also has some finger grooves. Now that's where we get into something else. Finger grooves are nice. Uh, extreme example would be like the old World War I trench knives, uh, the knuckle knives. Got the big old knuckle duster on. There's some disadvantage to that, but that's you know, some advantages too. I get onto that in a hammer grip with that old knuckle duster, and it's not going anywhere. I mean, I, you know, I, it's very hard. Now I'm also not going to be able to shift it. I, I, can't, I can't go to a reverse grip. I, I cannot... I can't shift my grip on it. I mean, once it's there, that's it. So you're locked in. If that's all you ever want to do, that's fine. That works. But you may want to move the knife a little bit in your hand, or you may have to move the knife a little bit in your hand. So let's see. We got this little fella here. So this is again sort of a compromise rather than finger grooves. Uh, and that's the other thing: is the finger grooves, if they're too deep, uh, I've seen them on some of the uh, Randalls, where they're very deep, very pronounced. Again, gives you good grip in a hammer grip or a nice pick grip, um, provided your fingers fit those. I mean, if your hand's a little smaller, a little larger, they may be very uncomfortable. So you have to sort of get your hands on it, try it out. Now this little fellow, little neck knife, it's got a ring. It's got almost no handle to hang on to, but that ring will hold it quite quite nicely, give you something to work against. Um, it limits, you know, I mean, this is, this is only going to be held in one grip, but it makes up for the lack of, of essentially handle material. Uh, let's see. Now another sort of compromise is the sub hilt. This has fewer, uh, you know, overly pronounced finger grooves or, or rings or whatever. It has a little less uh, less of an issue than those because it's still open, so you can, you can still move your hand around on it. Uh, you can move from one grip to the other. Uh, but again, if it's not right where you need it, there's there's no moving that thing. But it gives you you can push against this one and you can pull. And again, it may be important uh, a couple of reasons. If you're swinging your arm. Some centripetal force may take that sucker right out of there, unless, and you know, this has got a good curve at the back and it's got the sub hilt. So, the other thing is if you stick it into something and it sticks, you may need to put reverse force onto it. And so, that gives you something to work against. It gives you a good index, you can tell exactly where you're at, and it keeps the knife from going anywhere in your hand. Um, I'm not overly fond of sub hilts, but you know, it, it is an option, it is something you can use. Now, here's an extreme example of a chopper. Now, that's Pretty much all this one's good for is chopping. And you can see they have quite a pronounced uh, flare at the back. You'll see the same thing on the Kukri's and some of the others. Quite a pronounced flare. So as you're chopping, this one will not pull out of your hand, whereas something with a, a smaller grip might. You know, something like this, if it were a heavier knife, I mean, there, there's very little to go in there. And this one is actually at the back. It's a reverse taper. Ideal for stabbing, not so good for pulling, but you've got something to work on at the top there. So that gives you sort of an idea. And again, it's very personalized. Uh, how big are your hands? Uh, what is the texture of the material on it? Uh, as you, If you move to something slick, the geometry of the handle becomes very important in, in as to how well you can hang onto the knife. If you've got something that's got quite a bit of texture to it, you get a lot more flexibility because the texture, as long as you can hang onto it, again, as long as you can hang onto it, you're not wearing a glove, your hands aren't cold, whatever. Um, but your geometry is what allows you to apply the forces. And we can apply the forces in a chop, 
we can apply it in a stab, we can apply it in a slice, although that generally doesn't take nearly as much energy or put as much force on it. But you're, you know, as you apply the forces from your hand to the knife to your target, you know, it, it has to have something mechanically to work against. And so that's when you examine the shape of it and how it fits your hand. And again, this is super personalized. The thing to do is actually handle the knife. This one is just too big. It's entirely too big. It's very uncomfortable. It's got the finger grooves. But it's the opposite end of the spectrum of this little fellow, which is too small. Whereas for me, and again, very personalized, this thing right here is just about ideal. It's oblong. I can feel where the blade is instantly. I can get my hand up onto it. It fits my hand very well without forcing me into any particular finger or hand position. But I can move on the move on the knife if I have to. And you get like the old the old Randall. I mean, it's got some flare coming back. So, so you can hang on to it, and then you've got a good guard you can work against if you need to. Again, if saber grip, very comfortable in saber grip. Uh, less so maybe in a, in a hammer grip, but it, it's entirely workable. Uh, this thing, ice pick grip, this is absolutely ideal. Other grips, it's remarkably comfortable. It's okay, although it's a little, uh, little big for a saber grip, and you know maybe you got a little bulk, a little extra material you don't really need there. But it is a very workable blade. But again, this is designed for your ice pick grip. This is perfectly workable in an ice pick grip. Uh, it's really designed for saber or hammer grip. And this thing, again, it works in any of them, primarily designed for saber grip. Uh, so, like I said, you got to look at the geometry and use a little common sense. What are we looking for? Something that fits the hand lengthwise, something that fits it uh, as far as the diameter goes. Uh, oblong shape so you can uh, immediately tell where uh, the orientation of your blade and get it oriented in your hand if you have to. I mean, uh, okay, I can tell it's off to the side, but can I actually shift it in my hand? Uh, some some handle designs, you're not going to be able to shift it. Once you get your grip, you're done. Uh, and you better be happy with that one grip. Um, now, I don't have examples of push daggers. Um, I personally have not really used push daggers much. Uh, obviously, they'll allow you to give a lot of force in a stab. Um, you don't have a lot of leverage for cutting or chopping because the handle is so short relative to the blade. Um, you want to make sure that thing's wide enough so that the pad of your hand has got something to work against. Uh, you get uh, you get the little push daggers, you get all the way up to like the, the big uh, katars with the, you know, comes down the sides and, and you got a cross piece, you know, sort of like an M2, uh, heavy, heavy uh, machine gun uh, spade grip, you know, and then the blade comes out like that. Um, it's about as secure grips you're going to get. Uh, you'll also see some of the old medieval, they had the gauntlets with the blade worked into it. Uh, again, that's as secure as it's going to get, but it's also very inflexible and at that point impractical. I mean, uh, this I can carry on my belt, a gauntlet with a, <laughs> you know, not so much, but, uh, but we need to look at how we're going to be applying the forces forward, backward, twisting, torquing, slicing, chopping. What, you know, how are we going to apply the forces and does this allow us to apply the forces through the blade and into our target properly. But that gives you a little idea on the geometry of the handle of a fighting knife. And basically what we're looking for in it.